Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Joshua Thompson, AKA J Quality Music, professional musician and producer right here in LA. And this is Taste and Trouble. What is Taste and Trouble you may ask? Well, we're living in unprecedented times. So I had an idea. I wanted to bring together my passion for music and the love I feel when I'm cooking at home. We bring together some of the livest musical artists from around the world, pair them with the most creative private chefs and cooks to transform their body of work into amazing culinary dishes. Think about that. Music, food, hmm. I like to think of it as the most ultimate playlist on the plate for your ears and your taste buds. Here, the kitchen is our studio, where every ingredient has a place and every sound has a taste in the mix. We add a little bit of Q&A with your favorite artists, and then we top it all off with a special guest performance. So we wanna know what sounds and melodies do singers and songwriters use to get your ears grooving? And what spices and herbs can our chefs come up with to get your taste buds dancing? All right, y'all, enough talking. It's time for me to introduce the real stars of the show. So first up, our curator of taste, Ashley, AKA Jerk Mama. Hey guys, I'm best known as Jerk Mama. My mom's Jamaican and my dad's from the South, so it's only natural that my cooking style is a mixture of them both, just like me. With that being said, it's only right that we introduce Miss Jasmine Safina. Hey you guys, I'm Jasmine Safina. I'm from North Carolina and I love soul food. So it was just perfect for Ashley to make soul food. So when I made this mac and cheese, I thought about you and your music and your personality and I wanted to put a little kick into it. And every dish is just a little bit of spice in a different way. So specifically in this one, I did some Anaheim's and Pavano's, which is just a, one level, just one layer of spiciness. And it's just like a little surprise. It's not very spicy, but you don't expect it. Surprise, motherfucker! <laughs> Do you make your own cheese? Actually, I don't make my own cheese. I wish I could. Um, I often try to make everything from scratch, but it's just not realistic. But I do research all the cheeses that I use. I do a lot of test kitchen research and development and um, go to farmer's markets as well because a lot of independent businesses, small ones, they make vegan cheese. I didn't realize they had a sliced vegan cheese, so I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's crazy because now in 2020, it's so, it's kind of easy to be a vegan. They've made everything vegan. Like there's a vegan alternative to everything, so. There is, but it's, that's kind of the thing where you have to decide what type of vegan you're gonna be mm -hmm. um, because there are so many processed vegan foods and if you're gonna be a vegan, you might as well uh, do it right and be healthy, you know? <laughs> I agree, definitely a challenge for me. Whenever I think I'm gonna be vegan, I'm like, are you gonna be vegan or are you just not eating meat? Because it's definitely different. Plant-based frozen mm -hmm. chicken There we go. <laughs> Plant-based versus, yeah, I'm eating soy and like mm -hmm. fake stuff, definitely. You're right about that. I really enjoyed Ashley's vegan mac and cheese. It was my first time ever eating a vegan mac, so it was uh, it was just a great experience. Um, it didn't taste vegan. <laughs> it tastes like real certified, authentic. After our conversation, and you shared with me that you, you're like 85% vegan, but if you were, I love that 85%. Like, I like giving those kind of numbers as well. I'd be like, yeah, 86% sure. But um, you mentioned if you were in back home in North Carolina, you might be eating some good barbecue. And I'm like, wait, so let's, like, you love the idea of like something close to a vegan barbecue. So we did the mac and cheese, and we did the, I added a little jerk mother in there, put some jerk in the barbecue sauce, and we made some jackfruit vegan sliders. Um, and that has a kick to it too, because jerk is, it just resembles the lyrics that you have in your song and just like what the song stands for, the summertime. Oh, I almost thought the pineapple was in here. Tell y'all I'm dramatic with these sounds that I make. Just like to, I mean, 
people can say what they want to. We got easy ways of getting things done. I could have got a cabbage and, you know, cut the cabbage from scratch, but you know, somebody did that for me already. I feel like cilantro should come with this guide. Because there was a time when I was chopping cilantro and not realizing that this is what I was chopping. I know it's the better way to do it. Added a little jerk lover in there, put some jerk in the barbecue sauce, and we made some jackfruit vegan sliders. Um, and that has a kick to it too, because jerk is, it just resembles the lyrics that you have in your song and just like what the song stands for, the summertime. And um, there's the pineapples and it's sweet, and you want more, but it's only a slider. So you're gonna get like three bites and like, that's it. <laughs> Tell me, call with the oven, I call with the right, like this is it. Pineapples ain't the that's it. it didn't taste vegan. <laughs> it tastes like real certified, authentic, salty. The watermelon shooters. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited <laughs> to be the watermelon shooters. So we juiced these watermelons and um, yeah, it has a little bit of jalapeno in it. It's gonna a little be good. sweet, a little spicy. It's mm -hmm. just like me. <laughs> One of the things I took note on when I was talking to Jazz and listening to her music and I shared with her is like, it might look like, but it's heavy though. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> these, are, these are a hit. Like <laughs> they small, but they refreshing and they're great. Make sure it's enough. Oh, that's gonna be good cold. Yeah, I want to um, just make, I might have to add a little bit more watermelon for the sake of, I mean, this is, it's okay, it's a taste. It's better for you to get, actually, there's more. Are you gonna put ice in there or no? Put it in the freezer, fridge, something to get it cold. Because if we put ice in it, it'll water it down but I'm not even gonna keep it in here because I'm gonna put the tahini on the rim like you like. That's you. The watermelon shooters were so good. It's the perfect summertime drink. Very, very sweet with a little bit of a spice. That jalapeno just gave that little extra kick it needed, but it was so good. Hi, I'm Jasmine Safina and you are watching Taste and Treble. All right, everybody, we are back. This is Jay Quality Music, and I'm here with our guest artist for our first episode, Miss Jasmine Safina. Uh, so Jasmine, uh, now that you've got to experience a little bit um, of what Ashley is currently doing in the kitchen, uh, just tell me a little bit uh, about yourself um, and just how you came here to LA and how you've grown as an artist. That is a loaded question, I feel like. Well, okay, so I am from Durham, North Carolina. I've been in LA for four and a half years, it'll be five years in May. Honestly, I came here because I wanted something different. I've been in Durham, North Carolina pretty much my whole life. I've been making music there for as long as I can remember. Um, and it was just time to do something new, do something different and just, you know, see what I was capable of. Um, I came out here to visit a friend and I didn't want to leave. Great sunshine, beautiful people, great weed, like, you know. So I, I made the decision to move out here and 
almost five years later here we are. Awesome, awesome. And you know, we've obviously worked together for, you know, over the past three years. So um, I definitely appreciate you coming on to our first episode. So uh, just tell me a little bit about the process of actually having uh, your single and kind of like just who you are as an artist um, transforming the food. Tell me a little bit about that process and how that made you feel. It was a very different process. Um, I've definitely never done anything like this before. So I guess this was one of those moments for me like, uh, hey, I'm leveling up, you know what I mean? Like we're doing some new things, we're doing some different things. Like I felt like I was on like some morning news show helping somebody, you know, it was, it was really cool, it was really different. Um, and just seeing somebody that uses a different medium, because cooking can be art. You know, it's a, it's a different type of art. So seeing someone that expresses their self in a different way, um, seeing them use my music as inspiration, it, it was just really cool to just see the things that she saw uh, when we had a phone call maybe about a week ago, the things that she picked up on my, in my personality and things like that. Like, it's cool to be like, oh, well, you said this, so I did this, and you seem like you're like this, so I did that. Like, it was, it was a very uh, eye-opening experience. So uh, before we get into like the fun questions, I have to ask, like, obviously, um, I've created this platform here just simply because of, you know, my passion as a musician and producer in the industry, um, in addition just to, you know, my love for food. So for you, you know, as an artist, you know, during this time of quarantine, uh, what have you most like learned about yourself? That I really enjoy being at home. Um, I didn't realize how much I actually needed a rest. This whole time for me was like just a second to slow down take a minute to breathe and retrack uh, I mean before all this happened we were about to go on tour you know what I mean we were getting ready for a tour I was just finishing recording my album um, I was like geared up ready to go I was always doing something I was always somewhere doing like just da -da 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 -da, literally have a, a planner there's no white space so when this happened I want to say maybe like two weeks in, I was crying because I'm like, I'm not doing anything. Oh, I'm, I'm so lazy. I'm, you know, I felt like I was just the worst. I saw so many people taking advantage of this time and creating and, and they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I need a nap. You know, like that's, that's really how I felt. And, and I realized that that's okay. It's okay to not do something. Sometimes you have to not do anything to be able to create something really, really great. Um, also, I'm a little high, so I feel like I'm rambling right now. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. I understand you're also coming out uh, with a brand new project, which I'm very, very excited to hear about. So just tell me a little bit about that. I'm so excited about this. Uh, the album is Fill Me Up. It's a 13 track album. Um, I actually finished it almost like a year and a half ago. So I was, like I said, before this pandemic, I was ready, okay? Like, time to drop the album, time to go on tour. And so now it's been almost two years since, uh, since we recorded everything, and it's just time. I'm just ready. The last thing I dropped was Homesick, so that was back in 2018. Um, I'm just really excited to do something new and to, to give y'all something different. Okay, so I definitely have to ask you just a few questions because obviously this is Taste and Trouble. You know a lot about music, but I want to see like what are your responses are okay. in regards to food. First question is, what is one food you absolutely cannot stand? Only one? No, I'm a pretty picky eater actually. Uh, but one thing I cannot stand, can I give you two? I'm gonna give you two. I feel so childish. <laughs> I hate sweet potatoes and I hate tomatoes. Those are like, I can't do it. In college, I used to tell my track coach that I was allergic to tomatoes because I did not want tomatoes on my sandwich. That's, I don't like ketchup, like none of that, no. Yeah. Okay, so definitely like in and out, if you're going in and out, it's definitely just like not even patty and the, and the bread, it's just the bread. <laughs> yeah, because I'm 85% vegan, so yeah, you know, um, but even when I was eating beef, yeah, they don't have any condiments other than ketchup and mustard. So it's like, uh, I don't think this place is for me. I don't have any barbecue sauce. Like it's, uh, yeah, I don't do too much in and out. What is your favorite but bizarre snack? Cranberries. I'm sorry, you're granny for that one, cranberries. <laughs> For real? Like dry cranberries or like the like 
raw cranberries. I like dried cranberries like craisins. That's cool, but actually, like the fruit, like just raw fresh cranberries, I I eat it like it's candy. <laughs> okay. All right. So this one, this question, there is a wrong answer to this question. Do you put salt or sugar on your grits? Okay. Plot twist. I don't eat grits. Hey, she dodged a bullet, y'all. So, like you said before, we were supposed to be on tour before Rona. But I want to ask you, if you had your own music festival, like, say, 2022, Jasmine Safina is, like, everywhere. What food would you serve at your own music festival, and what would it look like? Okay, this might be a really weird combination, but most music festivals are all day, right? So I feel like it would be like a brunch and barbecue type of vibe because I love breakfast foods, but I am from the South and I love a good barbecue. So like, yeah, I feel like it'd be best of both worlds. You can you know maybe like a mimosa bar from a certain time, for like 12 to five, you got a mimosa bar, everybody get drunk off of mimosas, then get some good barbecue and some mac and cheese and just some good soul music. Like it's a, a soul food event. I would definitely get like my all day pass. You know, I would just ask for, you know, my VIP check in. That's all I would ask for. I think that does it. Jasmine, thank you so much for being a part um, of this, you know, first episode of the magic that we're making here at Taste and Trouble. And to everybody out there, I hope that you guys are just as excited as I am for her new project. And your new project is dropping. Fill Me Up is dropping September 30th. September 30th. Fill Me Up. Make sure you stream on all platforms support your artists thank you guys so much this is chasing trouble all right ladies and gents you've seen what we've got cooking in the kitchen now is the peace day resistance performing her newest single summertime love off of her debut album fill me up here's our guest jasmine safina
Track one is in the books. Join us next time with an all new artist and an all new chef. Ain't no telling what we're gonna cook up. Make sure you're following us and stay in tune here at Tasting Trouble. Peace. I need the summertime, the summertime, the summertime love.